Hi, everyone. My name is Alice. I'm the MCAI. Alice would like to all the best to everyone. It's a pleasure to meet everyone. The subject of my talk is what caused Earth's biggest mass extinction? Earth has gone through five extinctions. The one 252 million years ago during the Permian period was the most devastating. The Permian mass extinction, or Great Dying, killed nine out of every ten species on the planet and its effects are still seen today. Earth has undergone five mass extinction events in the past 550 million years. One at the end of each of the Ordovician, Devonian, Permian, Triassic, and Cretaceous periods, and a sixth is arguably occurring right now. The worst of these extinctions occurred about 252 million years ago and marks the geologic boundary between the Permian and Triassic periods. The Permian mass extinction may have occurred in one to three pulses that killed almost all life on Earth. During the Permian, Pangaea, a large supercontinent, had formed and was surrounded by the large Panthalassic Ocean. The immense size of Pangaea caused the interior portions of the continent to be cool and dry, while the coastal portions were typically warmer and damp. Increasing temperatures throughout the Permian allowed for a rapid diversification of organisms. Terrestrial plant life exploded and provided an important source of food for many land animals and allowed life on land to diversify. One such type of plant is the extinct genus Glossopteris, with its tongue-shaped leaves. The increase in plant life contributed to an increase in insect life because insects form close associations with plants. Hemipterans true bugs with sucking mouthparts began to appear in the Permian. Also alive during this time was Meganeropsis, a dragonfly-like insect genus that was the biggest of all known insects. Two important types of animals dominated land during the Permian, synapsids and sauropsids. Synapsids, which had one temporal opening in their skulls, are thought to be the ancestors of mammals. A well-known synapsid alive during the Permian was Dimetrodon, which is known for the large sail on its back that is held up by bony spines. Dimetrodon is commonly referred to as a dinosaur or as an ancestor of dinosaurs when in fact, it is more closely related to mammals than to dinosaurs and went extinct during the Permian, around 40 million years before the appearance of the earliest dinosaurs. Sauropsids had two temporal openings in their skulls and were the ancestors of reptiles such as dinosaurs and birds. Synapsids, according to the fossil record, seemed to be more dominant than sauropsids. However, sauropsids seemed more capable of surviving the conditions that caused the Permian extinction and became more dominant than synapsids. After the Permian, in the shallow oceans, Reefs were large and life among the reefs was diverse. Ammonites and brachiopods were very common. Little is known about life in the deeper parts of the Panthalassic Ocean because most fossil evidence is deeply buried. But cartilaginous fishes such as sharks and rays were common and true bony fishes were becoming more common. Because of the Great Doom, the exact cause of the rapid disappearance of species during the Permian-Triassic extinction event is still a mystery, partly due to the scarcity of fossils as well as the extinction disaster that happened about 252 years ago. For a long time, the remaining evidence is not clear. The theory most supported by scientists involves a massive volcanic eruption in Siberia about 252 million years ago, which produced a volume of lava and molten rock with a volume of up to 3 million cubic kilometer. Today, we can find evidence of this eruption in Siberia with a large volcanic rock area, covering an area of about 7 million square kilometer. Volcanic eruptions burned the surrounding landscape and released many other materials into the atmosphere including ash, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, 
methane, and many other minerals. The huge greenhouse gas emissions of carbon dioxide and methane from the eruption caused the Earth to warm rapidly, causing widespread climate change. In addition, the high concentration of sulfur dioxide created acid rain. At that time, the rain in the northern hemisphere was very acidic. The acid of rainwater is comparable to undiluted lemonade, said Benjamin Black, a postdoctoral researcher at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The ocean absorbs most of the carbon dioxide released from volcanic eruptions. High concentrations of carbon dioxide dissolved in water are toxic to many marine organisms preventing them from developing shells and skeletons normally. Toxic gases from volcanoes also trigger chemical reactions that destroy the ozone layer, increasing UV radiation that is harmful to the DNA of organisms. Globally, average atmospheric ozone concentrations fell below those observed in the Antarctic ozone hole in the 1990s. Black said, the Permian Great Extinction took place at the end of the Permian period, the last period of the Paleozoic, 250 million years ago, ending and marking the turn of the Earth's next geological period, the Triassic, the first epoch of the Middle Ages. The mass extinction wiped out 95% of the animal species in the ocean and more than 70% of the species on land. Earth at that time was no different from hell, like fantasy scenes only in movies. Just a little bit more life has disappeared forever on this planet. It is considered by many scientists to be the bloodiest crime in history. The culprit has erased all traces almost perfectly. For many years scientists were unable to figure out the true cause of this terrible event. The cleavage and fusion of continents terrible volcanic eruptions, and many other geological and climatic changes have buried almost all vestiges of this period. Fortunately, in the early years of the 21 century, scientists have found the first evidence and gradually come to the correct conclusion for this case. Scientists have found deep within rare rock samples left over from the Permitrius period molecules called fullerenes. These are carbon crystals resembling graphite, whose crystal structure resembles a soccer ball. Inside these crystals are traces of helium-3 and argon-36. These are isotopes are very difficult to find on Earth. It is only common in meteorites from space. This is quite convincing evidence of an asteroid that collided with Earth in the late Permian. Origin of the Great Extinction In the Paleozoic era, Earth had two large continents, Laurasia and Gondwana. Regarding motion, we all know that in the heart of the Earth is a giant block of lava. It is like a river of fire and molten rock. The Earth's surface is just a large thin solid rock lying on it, like the sea ice of the polar regions. Due to the movement of sea currents, the ice layer cannot always be stable. In some places it cracks. They can drift collide with each other when there are strong impacts such as currents below or simply a man made collision above the earth's crust is the same it consists of many fragments floating in the sea of lava although these lithosphere pieces have a very large mass and are arranged quite closely but that does not mean that they do not have vibrations and collisions. Even normal volcanoes that erupt after a long time are also caused by cracks in the Earth's crust. During the Permian period, the Earth's crust fluctuated wildly, huge plates of the lithosphere shaking, cracking, moving, and colliding. The two continents Laurasia and Gondwana approached each other and merged into the supercontinent Pangaea, the only continent on Earth at that time. This merger caused a terrible collision. A mass fracture occurred. A huge mass of lava was compressed and erupted into the ground. According to the current calculations of scientists, 
The amount of lava that was thrown above the surface of our planet then was about 1.5 million cubic kilometers. This is such a huge number that it is hard to imagine. For comparison, the most formidable volcanoes that have ever erupted in human history are unlikely to spew up to 1 cubic kilometer of lava. So what if there were 1.5 million such volcanoes erupting all over the Earth? The whole planet is a sea of fire that nothing can extinguish. Dust and carbon dioxide permeate the air that fills the sky, causing a greenhouse effect that makes the air hotter. Under the ocean, ocean currents change and many planetary systems disappear due to continental movement and collision. This whole process is the systematic cause of the most devastating mass extinction in history. Extinction also has certain values. When the asteroid hit the Earth and the continental collision occurred, a part of reptiles, fish and most of the giant insects were destroyed. It is the condition for some groups of reptiles to develop into dinosaurs, make them crown, become the true ruler of the planet for more than 150 million years. Not only that, but this change has also made it possible for our most distant ancestors to survive and thrive. Although only always fugitives in the world of dinosaurs, at least these mammals can still exist and wait for their time. Looking back at the history of the Earth's development, each extinction brings its important values. The mass death of trees in the carbon age created the coal mines for us today. Fish died in large numbers in the Permian Great Extinction, providing a huge source of oil that today we cannot do without. We also see that meteors, asteroids and volcanoes are always the ones who seem to have the power to kill and kill on this planet. It was meteorite strikes from 4 billion years ago that brought the first organic matter to Earth to give birth to the first life forms. Every time a volcano erupts, it causes disaster for creatures. But it was it that saved the planet during a global freeze 850 million years ago. But then it returned with an asteroid to become a destroyer in the Permian Great Extinction. Also the creator of a new biological system. And when the reign of the dinosaurs lasted long enough, these forces once again rearranged it all. So that the end result was who we are today. Today. Scientists are constantly observing and predicting to prevent the next killers that may one day visit Earth. Future Large Scale Extinction Event During the past 500 million years, the Earth has experienced five mass extinction events. After each such major event, Evolution has allowed many animal populations to regenerate and diversify, filling in the gaps created when species went extinct. However, with global warming trends and strong human impact on ecosystems, many researchers believe we are facing a sixth extinction event. Nearly 600 plant species have gone extinct in the last 250 years, twice the number of birds mammals and amphibians that disappeared from Earth during the same period, according to research findings published in the journal Nature. Nature, Ecology, Evolution in June 2019. In another study published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in 2018, Scientists at Aarhus University found that the rate of animal extinction is occurring out faster than nature's evolution. They use powerful evolutionary simulations to estimate the recovery time of mammals based on their past and future rates of extinction. They found that it would take nature 5 to 7 million years of evolution to restore mammalian diversity to pre-human levels. This scenario assumes humans would stop habitat destruction and species extermination. The model also shows that extinction in the next 50 years will require a recovery time of 3 to 5 million years. Discovering the root causes of extinction events is a fascinating topic for scientists. Because if we understand the environmental conditions that led to the disappearance of most species in the past, 
we can prevent a similar event from happening in the future. Please press the subscribe if you haven't subscribed. One like, click the bell and press choose the vibrating bell to receive notifications of new videos. Good. Bye. Everyone.